Okay, I went in Team Godzilla into Godzilla versus Kong and came out Team Kong. Okay, I went in Team Godzilla into Godzilla versus Kong and came out Team Kong. There's a reason for it. It's basically King Kong's movie. Godzilla is just visiting with a few cameos. So Godzilla fans will be highly disappointed as I was. Um, but I mean, I like the film. It's just, I was expecting more um, mano a mano with the two Titans and that just didn't happen. And so the Godzilla fans, you'll be a little disappointed, but Kong fans will be happy to know that he is the heart of the movie. So basically there's two storylines. One is Team Godzilla, so of course you have Millie Bobby Brown from the last movie from King of the Monsters carried over into this film and she knows something is going on, something is wrong with Godzilla because he is not a killer. And with her uh, is Brian Tyrese Henry who plays this uh, blogger who suspects there's something going on so he's trying to get down, get, uh, get the answers. And also the kid from Deadpool 2, Julian Dennison. So they're basically the comedic relief. Uh, we find out we get answers as they stumble upon things, but like I said, they stumble onto things. So they're basically the comedy relief. And then you have the real heart of the story. It's Team Kong, and you have uh, Alex Alexander Skarsgård, Rebecca Hall, newcomer Kaylee Hoddle, who's so cute. She's really ador adorable. She's the, the, the little girl, the deaf girl, little girl um, who Kong is attached to. So yes, Kong is still has a thing for girls, so he always follows... Um, uh, or falls in love with some, not falls in love, but cares for someone and wants to protect them. And then we have Isa Gonzalez on the team as well. So as I mentioned, this is really the heart of the story, Kong and this little girl played by Kaylee Hoddle. And she is just so adorable and their relationship is just so sweet. And there's some surprises um, about Kong that might make you shed a tear. It's so sad. Um, so that's basically what you gravitate to because all the other characters they're really not that interesting. Damien Bashir's character he heads up the new corporation called Apex and they're the ones um, sending Kong on this mission to find something I don't want to say that will help um, in controlling Godzilla. So basically his character is very cartoonish he's like the most interesting man on earth guy commercials. He dresses like a playboy billionaire and he runs this organization, but he's just so it's kind of cartoonish kind of a character um, that you kind of laugh at. But I'm just really glad that we have two Mexican actors from Mexico in this movie. So, yeah, even though their characters aren't that strong, um, Isaac Gonzalez plays his daughter. And she is just kind of this obnoxious snob who tags along um, because they're using their equipment from Apex. So she tags along to make sure that they... Um, do as they're told and that character is also a little bit you know not, not cartoonish but she's playing it a little one two dimensional all right let's get to what's the most important part of these movies is the monster fights <coughs> and sadly uh after king of monsters which was an orgasmic experience because the way they shot it the sounds the familiar sounds the uh, titans that we all know and love from the past uh, old school movies. I mean, it was epic. Here, mm, sadly, it's not. There's just not that intensity. And the sound design and the musical choices just throws it off. Uh, the score drowns out the, Titanic, the titans' iconic roars and the destruction that they leave, leave in their path. And that wasn't really captured. And I think that's that's at the heart of these, not the heart of the movie, but those sounds is what makes it so iconic. You always remember those sounds. And here, they're non-existent. So he lets the music take over. And so we don't hear, you don't see Kong pounding his, his, you know, his chest and hearing that iconic roar. Same thing with Godzilla. They changed it up a bit. The music, too, I think is only used once. So I never understood why, I remember uh, for King of Monsters, I asked the director why they didn't use the music in the first one, and he said he had to fight to use it. So I'm not sure what the deal is, but I think 
Um, the original composer charges probably too much money. I don't know what the thing is, but what the whole deal is, but that's my suspicion because he did say he had to fight um, to keep that in the movie and to use it more often. So I'm getting the idea that maybe uh, they're trying to move away from that, but that's a terrible idea. That's an iconic uh, theme song of Godzilla and I think it's necessary. So yeah, the monster fights weren't that great. Uh, we weren't, I wasn't, my husband and I, we weren't impressed at all. To be fair, I thought maybe it was because I was watching it at home and we have a good, really good system here, um, thanks to my husband. Um, but I thought, well, maybe it's not coming out like it should. So I went back and watched uh, King of Godzilla, King of the Monsters on the same setup. And no, the, the fight scenes, the music, the sounds of the kaijus, it was perfect. So it had nothing to do with my system. Um, so it had to do with the way they designed the sound in Godzilla vs. Kong. It just wasn't there. It was missing, like I said, the, the score was just overbearing where you really couldn't hear them. I mean, you would hear roars, but not. it wasn't as potent um, as King of the Monsters. So that was a big, um, big deal for me because of that. I just didn't feel the intensity. It was kind of like, eh, it was all right. And so the movie does settle who is king. I'm not gonna say who, but uh, I kind of actually liked, well, I don't know. Maybe I did like it or not like how they settled that score. Hmm, I'm not sure. Might be uh, up to each person to decide whether they were satisfied with that. But yes, they answered the question of who is king of the Titans. Okay, now I'm going to rank the movies uh, from Legendary from the past few years. So as you probably already know, can guess, Godzilla the King of the Monsters is my favorite just because... They had all the classic monsters, most of the classic classic monsters, and they were all spectacular. So that was my number one. Uh, following that was Kong Skull Island. I also rewatched that on HBO Max. Yay for HBO Max! I can watch all these films um, and compare, which I which is what I love. And then third is this movie, Godzilla vs Kong, and then Godzilla 2014, which had the same problem as Godzilla vs Kong in that we didn't get enough Godzilla. So. Those people who complained about that movie are not going to be too happy about this movie, most likely. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe Kong will make it up. Like I said, I did enjoy Kong. I really fell in love with Kong. So they did that job. Um, Godzilla, I thought, was kind of like a secondary character, so they didn't do much justice to him. So it'll be interesting to see where Legendary takes the next step. Because King of the Monsters introduced some of the major titans from the Kaiju series franchise. So what's left? And in this movie, they introduced somebody else. I'm not going to go further, but they've already pretty much called it on, on online. Um, so where do they go from here? Do they do another Kong movie? Do they do a Godzilla movie? Well, you know where I want them to go. I'm, I was a I'm a huge fan. Still a fan. I was a huge fan when I was a kid. I watched all the Godzilla movies. I was a couch potato. I loved them. They did have aliens in some of the movies who brought new titans. Um, so that'll be an interesting angle. I wonder if they've touched upon that. Um, I know everything there is about Godzilla movies. Warner Brothers Legendary, give me a call. I have a few ideas. But yeah, I was a big, big Godzilla fan. I was just telling somebody the other day, reminded, I, I reminded myself about that. When I was a kid, I would dream of Godzilla. I had these reoccurring dreams in the same setting in my neighborhood. So I live near downtown LA. So you can see the buildings from where we live. And so I would dream that he was coming and he was destroying things, but in my mind, I couldn't figure out, is he a is he good Godzilla or bad Godzilla? So that was my recurring dream and that was my dilemma. Not that he was, well, one, that he was coming, but I didn't know if he was a good guy or a bad guy. So that's how obsessed I was with Godzilla, that I would dream about him um, in reoccurring nightmares, I guess. I guess they would be nightmares because I was scared. But yeah, so I'm a huge Godzilla fan. And so this movie, this latest movie, uh, while, I, while I enjoyed it as a Godzilla fan, I didn't get enough of him. Godzilla is out March 31st in theaters and on HBO Max. <laughs>